Unchecked venom, vitriol, prejudice and hate has been let loose after the cowardly attack of jaish e mohammed terrorists on Indian CRPF Jawans in Pulwama, Kashmir last week. While the army has moved in with quick speed, the Indian government has promised stern action and begun isolating Pakistan diplomatically. There is a set of people who are using the Pulwama attack to air their prejudices, biases and hate. Now, while a few trolls on social media can be ignored up to a point, when Kashmiri students are reportedly threatened and a sitting governor says he agrees with the call to boycott Kashmiri goods, it's time to ask some questions. It's time to ask whether the social fabric of India is being threatened by some who seek political advantage and others who maybe just don't know any better. To talk more on this, I'm joined today by M.M. Ansari, who's a former interlocutor to Kashmir, and Swaraj India Chief Yogendra Yadav. Uh, I want to welcome both of you to the show and thank you for speaking with us today. Um, Mr. Yadav, you put out a three-point agenda of sorts on day one, on the day that the news first came of these attacks uh, and the news started coming in of our brave CRPF Jawans who had been martyred. And you said... Um, Broadly speaking, let's not politicize the issue, uh, bring all parties together and not make it an election issue. I want you to comment on what we've been seeing ever since, where everyone believes that his rage enables him to become a defense expert. Everyone seems to have their own plan of how we should go to war. And biases are just creeping in. Uh, absolutely, Tamanna. The whole point of what I suggested was that let us defeat the design of the terrorists. The design of the terrorists was what? What they, they must have thought that you know once we create something like this, then there would be a beginning of anti-Kashmiri hatred. Kashmiris would be attacked. They in turn would be even more alienated than they are. We would be able to create a rift, and the entire political discourse of India will be occupied now by. Pulwama, terror, Kashmir, then will be linked to Muslims and so on, that they would be able to derail the Indian political process. Therefore, my suggestion was that right in the beginning, let us, I mean, I had a three-point suggestion. I said, one, the government should take the opposition leaders into confidence about its overall approach, not necessarily the operational details. B, the opposition in turn should assure the government that they would not attack the government and push the government uh, on ev everyday basis so as to give government some space. And three, both the government and the opposition should agree that uh, given the proximity of elections, they will not make this into an election issue. That would have been a very effective way of defeating the designs of the terrorists. What we have seen is not a wonderful sight so far. Uh, one should acknowledge that uh, so far the prime minister has not made it an election issue. And Rahul Gandhi also has uh, given a very mature statement. But if you look at what Amit Shah Ji has been saying, if you look at the statements coming from many BJP leaders participating, almost turn turning the funeral processions into uh, kind of uh, election road shows, that's not a good sight. If we look at the media, uh, there has been a lot of very irresponsible talk. Uh, it is easy to be uh, brave sitting in a television studio. Uh, we have seen a lot of that among trolling uh, of a kind which is uh, has sunk to unacceptably low level and the ground threats. Uh, I should introduce one note of caution to say that this country has seen much worse. We have seen programs uh, targeted at minorities. <laughs> Thank God we've not reached that kind of proportion as yet. It is more about bullying, more about verbal abuses, more about threats, and not the worst that this country has seen. And one can sincerely hope that we don't get to that level. But the one big question all of us should be asking is, 
are we not playing into the hands of those very terrorists who we wanted to oppose? You know, um, Mr. Ansari, you have worked in Kashmir. You were an interlocutor from the government side, of course, during the UPA regime. And you and I have spoken several times in the past where you have said that the report mm -hmm. that you, your team produced was ignored by the UPA and subsequent governments in the NDA as well. No one really wanted to do anything about the situation. Today, do you find yourself in a tricky place? Because today in this atmosphere, when anyone tries to ask the question about what India has done in Kashmir or have we done enough to mainstream Kashmiri youth so they don't feel like becoming terrorists, that even that question is met with so much hate and anger. Uh, well, when you refer to the work that we try to do, for the government. Uh, our report uh, was submitted, but it was never considered uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the government, either of Jammu and Kashmir or the central government, neither they accepted it nor they rejected it, they did not examine. But at the same time, there uh, has been a number of other studies and recommendations uh, for improving governance, for uh, tackling the poverty, employment and education, uh, and also human rights violation related issues. Uh, but not action has been taken as a result of which what we see is that uh, from time to time unfortunate uh, 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 incidents have been happening as the one uh, has happened. Uh, in the recent past, uh, whether it was uh, Pathan Port, Uri, or now on Pulwama. Uh, Pul so what we see is that, uh, uh, you know, either because of the security failure or because of the uh, mismanagement of the political relationship between the central government and the Jammu and Kashmir uh, 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 government, uh, we see that there is almost total disconnect or you can say the political relationship between the center and Jammu and Kashmir states have been fractured and which is why we see that the PDP and the BJP alliance also collapsed uh, and uh, we see that the mainstream and the off-stream parties within the Jammu and Kashmir and the, all the mainstream parties uh, in uh, Delhi, uh, you know, uh, they do not find a common way to deal uh, with the Kashmir issue. As a result of which what we see that in the last 30 years or so, alienation has increased and with that alienation, uh, you know, allegedly radicalization has also been increasing. You know, you, you speak about and alienation, uh, we, Mr. Ansari. Uh, see, I, I just want to happen in yes. Pulwama. I we just want to backlash. I want to welcome on the on the show Mr. Tathagat Roy, who's of course the governor of Meghalay. Um, so thank you for speaking with us today. Um, we have been talking about the outcome of uh, the anger and how in the guise of this anger some people are venting their prejudice and hate. I want to ask you about your tweet today which has led to so much of yes. uh, controversy. And before yes. I get your response, I think it's only fair that I read out that tweet. You tweeted today that an appeal from a retired colonel of the Indian Army, colon, don't visit mm. Kashmir, don't go to Amarnath for the next two years, don't buy articles from Kashmir Emporia or Kashmiri tradesmen who come every winter, boycott everything Kashmiri, and then you say, I am inclined to agree. So I want to yes. ask you, as a governor, yes. as someone in a constitutional position, don't yes. you think it is incorrect to back a statement which isolates one section of Indians? Don't you believe Kashmiris can are you, Indians? Can you cite the constitutional provision which prevents me from voicing my personal opinion in such matters, particularly when the security of the state is concerned? Can you cite the constitutional provision or a judgment of the high, Supreme Court or the High Court which is interpreted the Constitution in the manner that you are saying? Don't you think that it is a moral duty for you it to foster not, peace? See, see, let's not talk of morality, because morality varies from person to person, country to country. I am talking about legality. About legality, is there any constitutional provision written down in the Constitution or inter so interpreted by any of the High Courts or Supreme Court that I cannot voice an opinion of the type that I have done so far?
Do you think it's correct to, sir? That is my question to you. Why I do you think not you, buying I Kashmiri carpets I will help? You, we are talking about legality. No, we I'm not asking you a legal about... question. I'm asking you, sir, you are in a powerful, influential position. People look I up to you. To, but I am talking of legalities. You may be asking something else, but I am talking of legalities. Okay. I am bound by suppose, legalities. Suppose, suppose... I am not... No, please, sir. Don't, please don't interrupt. Please listen. I am not bound by somebody's personal opinion of what is morally correct or legal or some other way it is correct. I am concerned about what my legal obligations and my legal boundaries are. So you agree that legally there is nothing to prevent me from saying such a thing? Uh, I wouldn't know any way as far as I'm concerned. I will take you at face value. It is completely legal. I'm right, not a lawyer, right. so I can't claim whether it is or it is not. Right, right. I'm you asking you, what is the logic, sir? Answer, anyway, what is the logic, ahead. sir? What is the logic of what you are saying? How will not yes, buying yes, Kashmiri yes. carpets, how yes, will yes, not going to Kashmir as tourists you, presently, help the I'll situation? Tell you presently, presently, I'll tell you. Wait a second. Presently, I'll tell you. You see, all other kinds of ways have been tried. Over the last three decades, we have seen, uns we have seen unspeakable atrocities against our armed forces, against three and a half lakhs of Kashmiris, Kashmiris, who happen to be Hindus and who are known as pundits. They have been driven out of their home and have for no reason other than their religion, and they are eking out a miserable existence on, uh, in Tamil and Delhi. Nobody is talking about them. The armed forces are going over there, spreading words of love, at the same time trying to uh, uh, keep down separatist forces. The forces are the uh, people are pelting, the boys are pelting stones at them. <laughs> Pakistani infiltrators are getting in. They are creating cells within, within them. What does all this indicate? This indicates that we have exhausted a whole lot of possibilities. I wouldn't say all possibilities, but a whole lot of possibilities. Now, why not try this? This is a non violent method that I suggested. I am not suggesting that beat anyone up. I am not suggesting that bang someone on the head or uh, fire at someone, which the army is already doing. I am suggesting something totally non -valid. What is so wrong about it? Okay, Mr. Roy, how do you think that not yes. buying Kashmiri Hello, carpets, not. for example, will solve Hello. the issue? And I would, I would request you to listen to opinions on the panel as well. Mr. Yogendra Yadav would like to ask you a question. Yes. Yes, Mr. Yadav, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, Tamanna, I have no questions for someone who misuses a constitutional authority to no, speak No, no, if you begin with that premise, then there right is no conversation. Speaking of law, I do not. One minute. There is no conversation. Mr. Governor, you may be governor in your state, you are not governor in this television views. studio. Let's Please listen to each to other's listen. views at the very least. We can listen to each other's views. Mr. Roy, at the very least, we can... No, no. At the very least, we can... No, no. At the very least, we can listen to each other's views. At the very least, we can listen to each other's views. What are we doing here? Am I asking questions or am I participating in a debate? We are asking you questions, sir. So We're asking you questions. questions. But this gentleman started sitting on a high horse and pontificating that I am this or I am that. So I'm not prepared Hear to him out, please. Sir. Hear him out, yes. Anything. Yes, Mr. Yadav, please. Mm -hmm. So you ask questions and answer them. Yes. Mr. Yadav, go ahead. I think uh, His Highness sitting there has not heard no, no, me. No, no, once again, you are trying to be sarcastic. Now he should listen, I am not, I am not is... in for any kind of inquisition for any old person that a TV channel uh, uh, imports. If you are going to talk high, high His Highness... If you want that, to occupy the role Roy, of a television Roy, anchor, why don't you Roy? resign okay. the position okay, and one become minute, a television one minute, anchor, one minute, sir? One minute, one minute, one minute. Well, let me come in here. One minute. Okay, Mr. Roy, let me ask you a question. If, it, if a question yes, is only yes, acceptable yes, for me, then I will ask you a question. The I reason, Mr. Roy, I am concerned about what you are saying is because of the position you uphold, Mr. Roy. And the fact yes. that it echoes so much of um, hatred and bias that we are seeing. There are reports of Kashmiri students having to flee their colleges, having to go back. Don't you think this will alienate people in Kashmir even further? Listen, Don't yes, you think yes, it's irresponsible yes, to say okay, this okay, no, and then to that back question. it? That That's is, a question, that is sir. That question, I'll answer that question. Okay. Now, wait a second and answer, let me answer that question. Are you aware 
that a large number of students from the Northeast have been hassled in different parts of India for no reason. What news has been made of it? Nothing. Uh, mention in some uh, obscure corner of the uh, 55th page of a newspaper. But today, some Pakistani students are floating a counter narrative that Kashmiri students are being manhandled all over the country and will make huge uh, news of it. I don't trust it. I don't trust that bit of news. I think it is a counter narrative floated by by, by Pakistani students in this country. Well, and sir, I'm not okay. going to, I well, am not going to believe sir, it. Sir, established newspapers like knowledge. the Indian Express have reported it. There are videos no, no, which Express show it. Report. Indian Express is not Bible or Kita. The point so, is, is that it, are does you it aware? make sense to are only you say aware? I will believe what aware? I want to believe and are I will not aware? listen to anything else? Are you aware? No, 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 I'm listening. You are asking a question, I'm listening. Yes. But you tell me, are you aware that Northeastern students have been. I am in this aware, manner? but this is, this is what we call yes, what about to read. Okay, if Northeastern things, students things, are things, being harassed, does it justify what you are saying? The same kind of publicity. As you are trying to make out the Kashmiri students, uh, the uh, how is that, that, that an answer to my question, Mr. Roy? With all due respect, how is that an answer to my question? No, no. The answer to your question is this: I simply don't uh, believe what you are saying. Okay. You are making a mountain of a mill Don't you believe? Some don't you believe? That might have been there okay. here or there. Okay. But I am not going to believe this without a corroboration. Okay, but do you believe, do you believe that there is a chance, a statement of the kind that you have made today from a person of your position could incite people towards violence? Nothing or will we sort. wait for the corroboration of the violence, violence to occur? I have, we have heard worse, much worse, much worse and much more violent things. Whereas from whom is, is the question, sir? You are a governor. Listen, if you are asked, if you are either you, either you are asking me questions or you are listening to the answer, not the two, not two of them together. Okay. Now, when you are, when uh, uh, you hear, I mean, I can uh, often tell you hundreds of cases where worse violence has been advocated by different parties against the government, against the city, against the state. Now, nobody talks about that. I have not talked about any violence. I have talked about a totally non-violent means. Why are you suggesting that this may end in violence? What will it lead to? I don't to? understand. I don't understand what it will lead to. What is what the purpose? What is the What is the point? Your, Apart from fostering got, more hate. I'm an astrologer to answer that question. But when you but make a statement, I, I expect you assume there will be an outcome. You're a responsible no, person, but sir. As far as I am concerned, it is a non-violent suggestion that I have given, and I okay. do not think that it is. I think. I think. I think it's only fair that we listen to other views. I only hope, uh, Governor Roy, that you will also listen to other views, and I want to uh, pass it on to Mr. Yogendra Yadav now. No, 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 I am not going to talk. I said I am not going it's to get It's up to you, sir. Today. I invite I you to listen to views. It's up to you whether you wish to or not. not yes, to Mr. Yogendra Yadav. I thought that you were going to ask questions. I am going to answer questions. Yes. You are Tamanna, done with questions. yes. We have witnessed you are done with questions, the utter depravity I'm to which constitutional listen, offices in this country have been reduced. Uh, if this gentleman today. wants to become a television yes. anchor, ask him to retire from there and become a television anchor. Otherwise, ask him to listen to what is being said. No, I mean, I invited the Mr. Roy to listen. It's up to him whether he wants to or not. I can't, I can't force anyone to listen. But I think we've heard Absolutely, what he has to yeah. say, and that's, that's all that can be said Absolutely. about it. Yes, Tamanna. Mr. Yadav. Tam yeah. Yeah, Tamanna. Uh, in any working, functioning democracy, constitutional democracy, this gentleman should have been dismissed from the office that he holds. And the reason for that is the following. There is a high constitutional propriety attached to constitutional offices. If he were to ask you, is there a law that says that a governor cannot go and strip in public? Yes, sir, there is no law that says so. But if a governor does so, he should be dismissed. Is there a law that says a governor cannot be drunk and dance in a public park? There is no such law. But if they do, they would be thrown out. Similarly, there is a constitutional propriety. There is a preamble to this constitution that says that fraternity is an ideal. There is a law in this country that says spreading enmity toward other communities is illegal, is punishable. 
and for anyone occupying constitutional offices, there would be a much higher bar than anyone else. This gentleman pretends to speak on behalf of the Northeast. Two years ago, people from the Northeast were hounded in Bengaluru. If the if the governor of Karnataka at that point had said, I am suggesting something non-violent, let people of Karnataka boycott people of the Northeast, what would you say? Shouldn't that person have been dismissed at that point? Similarly, this gentleman has lowered even the already low standards of our constitutional offices. He has no business to stay in this office anymore, especially after what he has spoken on this channel a few minutes ago. Anyone with any sense of responsibility listening to him in the Home Ministry should be issuing orders for him to be removed right away. You know, my concern is, and Mr. Ansari, I want to come to you. My concern is that it has become okay. It has become okay to say things which are, which were considered politically incorrect. Uh, you know, where you, it, it, it's, it's become okay to air your prejudices against someone's race, religion, state. Uh, and, and that is the most concerning part, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, uh, I'm really very uh, sad and sorry to hear uh, what Mr. Rao said, uh, you know, on your channel. And I must say that it is this kind of mindset which has divided our society and has created the kind of problem that we face uh, with our uh, Kashmiri people. I mean, it is this kind of mindset and the way he has looked at it, and uh, they, this alienates, uh, you know, the entire uh, Kashmiris and the way they have been raising their concerns and the voices that is not being heard. So I entirely agree with uh, what Yogendra Yadav said uh, about uh, some such constitutional authorities, they must be immediately sacked. And I think uh, whatever that he has said, you should properly air it so that the people uh, at large should know that what kind of people are ruling and guiding the nation. You know, and uh, he is uh, holding one of the important positions in an important state. Uh, and uh, uh, his, whatever he says that uh, matters most, and many of his followers will probably be acting and that is why we see that after Pulwama there has been a great deal of backlash throughout the country and the uh, Kashmiri students are being harassed everywhere. So that is very unfortunate and I feel very sorry to uh, hear some such voices uh, and the mindset of the people and I'm glad that you have been able to expose them. You Thank know, you. Um, I also want to uh, make another important point uh, over here right now because of the kind of, um, I would say, media coverage, social media messaging, etc. Um, people blur the distinction. Uh, people like us who are today having a conversation about stopping hatred say, would say, maybe some of them, that why are you siding with Pakistan or the terrorists? I think it's important to explain, and here I'm going to come to Mr. Yadav again, that saying something which is just basic good sense and human decency doesn't mean you're condoning terrorists at all. All of us want action for what happened in Pulwama, and the two shouldn't be mixed up. Uh, absolutely, Taman. Now, there are two separate things. One, there is a external inspired terror attack inspired and protected by Jaish-e Mohammed, which is actually an arm of Pakistan's ISI and Pakistani army. There has to be a response to that. Serious cost must be inflicted upon them. Diplomatic, economic, military cost must be inflicted. That's one part of the problem. Second is the Kashmir issue, which is our own people. People from BJP never tire of saying Kashmir hamara abhin ang hai. Are bhai abhin ang hai to aapko dard nahi hota jab us ang mein kuch hota hai. When these people cry, when they are alienated, when they suffer, should we not feel their pain and attached to them? And what this governor has done today, this would only make their pain much deeper. So the only way of responding to the Kashmir situation is not only to address the external thing, that must be done right away and the government should be supported and that should not be made an, into an electoral issue at all because otherwise the terrorists succeed in their design. So it's not merely about humanity, Iktamanna. It's not merely about being nice and human. If we want to protect this great country called India, the way to protect is not through law and order, through danda, through goli. 
someone like Atal Bihari Vajpayee understood it much better. He was asked, how are you going to solve the Kashmir problem under the constitutional frame, Samvidhan ke daire mein? He said, nahi, insaniyat ke daire mein. That was one of the wisest words spoken at that time. Unfortunately, the UPA government could, did not follow up on that great opening available. Unfortunately, the Narendra Modi government has only made the matters worse. Something seriously needs to be done, and that has to be about democratic dialogue, about opening up, about uh, uh, doing a political process. It's a political problem that can be solved only politically and pushing our security forces to solve a political problem is very unfair on our security forces. No army or security force in the world has ever solved a political problem. It's our problem. We have to solve it. You know, um, uh, talking about the security forces, I think also important to mention here that they are experts who know what they're doing. Um, for every person to think that he or she is suddenly a defense analyst and an expert and should uh, decide how India responds uh, is, is just not helping. Um, I think um, if there is anger, which there is definitely, it should be directed in more can positive I, can I measures. Can say one more thing, Tamanna? Yes, yes, Mr. Yadav. Uh, just one thing. You know, over the last five days, who are the people who have spoken the most sane and sensible things on this issue? Not the politicians, not the television anchors. It is actually those who have donned uniform, ex-generals, ex-DIGs, ex-army people. These are the people who have spoken in the most restrained language. They have spoken in the most responsible way because they know what is war. They know what are the costs of a war. They know why we should not rush into things of this sort. So I would plead with everyone, please listen to security forces. They are the pride of this country. Allow them to do their work. Don't tie their hands. Don't push them into a frenzy. Don't push the political establishment into ordering silly things to them. Absolutely. Leave it to the experts uh, and the hate. Well, uh, there's no place for it in the public domain. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ansari and Yogendra Yadav, for speaking with us today.